Welcome to our first drive of the BMW iX. All the talking about this car is about that big grill. We'll come back to that in a minute. And it doesn't matter what you think of the looks of it. If you don't like the looks of it, you're probably not going to buy it. But there you go. I will say it grows on you a bit and it's a bit better in the metal. It has a lot of presence. This dark colour probably suits it better too. There's a lot to talk about, however. This car is astounding on the road. It is a big, heavy SUV. It's about the size of the BMW X5, actually, but it's heavier again, despite the fact the BMW has managed to take 50 kilograms out of the body weight. The battery is 500 kilograms, so they had to deal with that. So it's well over two ton. Now, back to that grill. No, it doesn't leave air in, but it has some function, actually. Um, in behind here are the radar sensors for the various driver assistance systems. And the iX will be the first BMW with more advanced autonomous driving features. Interestingly, this outer layer is polyurethane and it self heals, which is quite cool. And there's also a heating element in here, so even if it's cold, wet, snowy, the radar sensors can actually be cleared. This arrives in Ireland before the end of 2021, and really it's a 2022 car. Despite the fact that it's the range topping model, um, it'll come in at less than some of the BMW X5s because of our taxation system, etc. So we're driving at the moment the top of the range one here, which is called the X-Drive 50. This has got 523 horsepower, 765 newton meters of torque, thanks to two electric motors, and it's astoundingly fast. BMW quotes in auto 100 kilometers an hour time of 4.6 seconds, and that isn't the most impressive part actually of the line. We were on the autobahn today for a few hours, and you're already doing 180 kilometers an hour, and you put your foot down further, and it pushes you back into your seat. Whatever you think about the exterior of the iX, the interior is spectacular, actually. There's a lot of new stuff in this car. BMW has really ramped it up. This is like its next generation interior. Where to start? The steering wheel's new. It's hexagonal shaped. And initially, look at the pictures and think, oh, that's a bit weird. BMW has been so good at keeping perfectly circular wheels while everybody else is going for flat bottomed and has done for a while. And yeah, it does look odd, but actually it feels good um, and gives you loads of view into the instruments in front of you. It also comes with some new controls for BMW actually. So in a way they're almost Tesla-like, would you believe, um, in that they have multifunctional and they change what they do as well depending on what uh, part of the menu you're in. They are way higher quality than anything Tesla makes, however, and it feels really good to use. This curved screen in front here is really nice as well. It looks crystal clear. The touchscreen in the middle here is super sharp to respond um, and it runs BMW's new OS 8. So it's faster than before, it's more powerful than before. The menu system is quite different. It takes a while to get used to actually, but there's a huge amount of customization in it. It's actually really nice to use. How you can use that, obviously you can use voice, but our preferred method is the old iDrive controller down here. Um, and now you've got this crystalline details on it. It's almost see-through glass and it's just nice to use. It's very tactile. This is set into this wooden looking panel actually, but this moves. This is actually touch sensitive, this is buttons, and it's really pleasant to use actually. It looks good, very tasteful. Elsewhere, you've got a very, very nice material covering everything. It's a bit like Alcantara, it's a bit like suede. Um, there's very little leather in this particular model. You can get loads of different finishes, obviously. And it's different, it, you know, it's not the normal luxury car. It feels good, it looks good. In terms of space, it's not far off a BMW X5. Um, no, you can't have it as a seven-seater, as a pure five-seater, but it's a wide car inside, so up front you have loads of space, loads of width, loads of legroom, plenty of headroom. And in the back, the, the rear seat is actually quite wide too, so three adults would be quite comfortable back there. You'd probably get three car seats back there if you needed to. Not sure it's the clientele that we buy in this car will need that. The middle actually is quite clever, flat floor all the way around, but in the middle as well, there's a recess into the center console. So whoever's sitting in the middle has somewhere to put their feet. So it really is designed for three adults. The boot, it's about 500 liters. It's okay, it's not huge, but that's perfectly usable for, for most people. And this is me sitting behind my own driving position. You can see how much knee room I have, loads of leg room, loads of space to stretch out actually. Um, it's quite light and airy thanks to glass roof, 
good visibility in all directions. And again, like the front, it's very high quality. You have this lovely, lovely metal effect sheen here. It's quite warm. It's not quite gray or silver. It's almost a gold effect to it. And actually, as I'm here, the buttons for the doors are, are that. They're electrical buttons. So you gently push that and it opens. I mentioned how good this car is on the Autobahn earlier, and it is. It's unbelievably refined, unbelievably stable, and massively fast. The fact that it's fast shouldn't be a surprise with so much torque there. Um, the fact that BMW has made it so quiet, so stable, and so refined as well is what's so impressive. On these smaller roads, <laughs> it doesn't feel like a giant car. It, it doesn't quite shrink around you, perhaps, but it feels agile, surprisingly, and BMW's chassis engineers have done a really good job there. The steering is good, the balance is really great, actually. You notice it through a sequence of corners, and it's just a lot of fun. In these very challenging mountain roads, you can probably see how steep it is here. It's effortless. The torque just shoots the car up here. You know, it disguises its weight. It's, it's kind of silly. But through all of that, what you, once you get used to that torque, you kind of realize that Actually, it's nice to drive too. You know, the steering is well weighted, the nose responds well, the body control is very good, the wheel control is very good over bumps and everything. They don't hop and skip around the place. It's a really top performance. It's worth noting that this particular model that we're testing has uh, adaptive suspension, air springs, which helps massively as well. Um, it alters the height depending on the driving mode, which is useful and it also has the uh, integral active steering which is BMW speak for four wheel steering so that makes it feel a bit more agile especially in the really tight corners or when you're turning when you're um, parking etc you don't have to have all those things another thing that this car has actually is a special noise reducing foam in the tires and that's probably going to be optional in Ireland as well when it arrives there's two different models going to come to start with we can't tell you about a third one just yet there's a uh, xDrive 40 and this the xDrive 50 so to recap it's a big SUV it's a big electric SUV it's got more performance than anybody will ever need um, but it marries that with real refinement, great stability and more agility than it deserves to. Um, it, it doesn't feel like a two and a half ton SUV. It just drives well. It drives like a BMW, but it's a bit more than that, I think. It's it, it taking the luxury aspect of it up a notch. It's an impressive car. So that's our first very quick look at the BMW iX. It is not a conventional SUV. It's not even a conventional BMW. It is something new. It's setting out the stall of future electric BMWs. Not everyone will like the looks. Everyone will love the luxury and how it drives. That's what sets it apart.